Well, good evening, Father's Heart. I'm so, so, so excited to be with you this evening. I trust that you are ready for an awesome time as we come around God's Word. So let's just pray as we come together. Father, I thank you right now for your Word. I thank you, Lord, that you're moving by your Spirit in our lives. Lord, I thank you that we are never going to be the same again. And Lord, that as we come before you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will come and change us, come and minister to us, and Lord, most of all, grow us up to what you have for us. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, folks, I'm really excited to be with you this evening. I trust that you are having a wonderful Sunday, very relaxed, ready for the week. But I want to just say this before we get going. I want to just uh, speak to every single person who does not have a local church. If you are a Christian and you are still floating, as we call it, all right, where you're not sure where you are connected, I want to just say this. And it's really important that we understand God's principles and understand God's order. God does not move outside of the order of the local church. You cannot be a lone ranger and expect God to flow in your life and anoint you to do things. All right. God is expecting every believer to be connected to a local church for two reasons. Number one is the covering, the protection. All right, the local church has got an authority to bring a spiritual protection over you so that you can grow quicker. Okay? Number two, so that you're accountable. All right, if something goes wrong, who are you accountable to? We need to be accountable one to another. But let me tell you something. We need people to give us input, give us advice and guidance. And so I'm speaking to those that are still floating around. I want to just encourage you and say this, consider joining Father's Art Digital Church. Consider coming and joining us. How we work is very simple. We are one local church right over the nation, and we do not have local buildings all over the place. What we do is we have our, our teachings on a digital platform, and then we have small fellowship groups all over. And we work from the small fellowship group platform. All right. And so I really want you to consider that because we are a local church. We will take care of all the needs that you need. All right. Everything that you need, we will make sure it gets met. But I want to say this. It's time that we come in line with God's word. It's time that we come in line with his order, because I believe that God is about to move miraculous supernaturally over our nation. But we need to be in order for that to happen. All right. So if you are interested and would like to consider that please go to fathersart.co.za all right if you'd like to uh, become a member of father's art digital church please just click there to apply for membership <coughs> excuse me and uh, immediately the minute you've applied we will immediately pick up the spiritual responsibility for you and it's so so important okay all right i want to get into our teaching this evening firstly i want to deal with our giving teaching. All right, as we're coming up uh, in this week is our tithes and offerings week. And so I want us to really focus on what God's word says. Okay? Because so often we do stuff out of a habit or we just, you know, we don't do it correctly. <coughs> Excuse me. But I want us to focus on this. God's word says very clearly that we all need to tithe. I want us to go to Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 12. It says this, And all Judah brought the tithe of the grain, the new wine, the oil to the storehouse. The entire nation, all right, remember that, that the nation at that stage was divided into two kingdoms. But I want you to see the entire nation of Judah brought their tithe as a nation. Can you imagine what would happen if every Christian on the, in our nation tithed? I want to tell you right now, it will lose a spiritual dynamic. And I'm not even talking about the unsaved. In this case, the entire nation, saved or unsaved, tithed. And I want to say that God promises that when we tithe, He will bring a protection onto our finance. 
He will rebuke the devourer on your behalf. But can you just imagine if God was rebuking the devourer and everybody's finance was secure in a nation, how strong economically that nation is going to be when God is intervening. You see, these are promises that God had made. And I believe that it is one of the biggest tricks of the devil to get the believer not to tithe. Because the minute we don't tithe, we don't have our protection, we don't have God intervening, and we are going to head for a real problem. And so, saints, I want us to really evaluate where we are at. Is tithing part of your lifestyle? If so, you can claim excuse me, the power of the protection and the promises of the tithe over your family. All right. You could say, God, I have tithed. I thank you, Lord, that you are going to do something supernatural for my family. And that my finances is protected in Jesus' name. And that blessing will be seen over my family because I've been obedient to your word. So let's just pray over our tithes and offerings, but particularly over the tithe this week. All right, as many people are tithing in the week, as you tithe, do not just send it in, do not just give it an offering, do not just do an EFT, whatever way you do it. I want you to actually pray over that tithe. So let's pray. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. That as we tithe this week, Lord, that we are going to do it in faith. Lord, as we give, we give in faith. We believe your word. And Lord, I thank you that you're going to do something supernatural for each one of us. Thank you, Lord, that you're going to do something amazing for each one of us in Jesus' name. Thank you for your protection over our finance. Thank you for rebuking the devourer on our behalf. Lord, I thank you right now for a supernatural move of your spirit to take place in our lives. Lord, I thank you that we will see a supernatural protection over the, our finances. We will actually see it. And Lord, I thank you right now that as we give, we give in faith, believing you, making you our source and our only source. Lord, we thank you that we can return our tithe to you and as we do that, we will see the power of God be made manifest in our lives. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Folks, I just want to remind those giving from um, out of the country. All right, our banking details are on fathersart.co.za. And I want to ask that uh, somebody just uh, send you the banking details if you haven't got it. All right, uh, just put it in the comment section. And then also, I want to just say that um, those giving outside of the country, please go to fathersart.co.za and click the donate button. Please just use the donate button. Uh, it's the quickest, cheapest, and easiest way to give in Jesus' name. All right, so I want to bless you. I want to say thank you for standing and being faithful. And I want to remind you, that if you cannot help and assist the poor and you want uh, Father's Heart to help with that, as you give to, uh, on the description or reference, to say for the poor, and we will allocate it in that, and it will go towards the poor. Okay? So remember that when we give in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I want to get into tonight's topic, and I think it's going to be a fun one. I want to deal with the topic entitled... Form, fold, and function. Form, fold, and function. I want to start by saying this. Not one of us are the same. Not one of us are the same. Not one of us have the same identity. Not one of us look the same. Even identical twins do not look the same. You can ask any of the parents of the twins. You might think they're the same. But the truth is that they are different and the parents will pick them up very quickly. 
But I want to say this. Many of us don't feel unique. Many of us don't feel like we are special. And there are many reasons for that. But I want to say, get this in your spirit. God has made you unique. God has made you unique. Now, there are many people who make this statement. And I want to get some of the foundation laid. Nobody is re irreplaceable. Okay, everybody has the thing of, well, everybody can just be replaced. I, my answer to that is yes and no. Because not every individual that you're going to replace that person with can do it in the way that the person did it before you. Because everybody is unique. They've got a unique style, a new, unique way, and their skill sets are very often different. And so, when somebody is being replaced, there is going to be a major change in everything that's happened. The way it's done, the outlook. <clears throat> Why? Because the individual is gone. There's not a copy of the person. So I need you to understand that when people speak about a legacy and they say, I'm going to hand my legacy over to my children, the minute the child takes over, the entire company shifts and changes. Same happens in churches. You cannot copy my gifting or my style or my skill set by replacing me with somebody else. Because God has made them unique. I am unique. We are not a copy. And I need us to have a look at this because God has created us unique and said that every one of our giftings are needed for the body of Christ. The problem that we have had as believers is that we so easily compare ourselves to somebody else who has a similar gift. Let me give you an example. If you have a gift for sport, it won't be long and you'll be comparing yourself to somebody else who plays in the same position as you do. And we need to understand that God has given you a uniqueness about you that is God-given. Now we need to celebrate this. We need to celebrate that we are unique and that God has made us special. And there is no duplication, no copy of who you are. So I want us to go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. God formed man. <clears throat> All right, I'm just going to ask that as we get into this teaching, please just put the scriptures up for me as we're doing this live. All right. So I want you to see that God formed man right from the beginning. But in Isaiah 44 verse 2, it says this. Thus says the Lord who made you and formed you from the womb, who will help you. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant. All right, and it carries on. But I want you to see this. God forms you in the womb. He determines what your personality is going to be like. He determines what your skill set is going to be like from the time that you're born. What giftings do you carry? What are you going to do with your, um, with your future? 
Everything has been determined by God Himself because He's designed us for a plan and a purpose. And I want us to get past this idea that somebody is more important than somebody else. You know, I struggle and I still struggle with this today. Um, in the secular where we've de deemed certain careers as professionals. I really want to ask the question. What makes a doctor or an accountant more important than a boulder or a plumber? Because you need to have your skill set in place in order to do that. They are very different, but they are not less important. Why are you important? Very simple answer. God made you. God not only made you, but you made you in the way, in the form that you are, in the, the way that you think. The way that you see life, the giftings, the personality, God put that together and said, this is what Arthur Frost is going to be like. And you need to know that God put you together and he said that this is what every your name is, of course, is going to be like. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. Can you imagine God going and saying, listen, I'm already calling, um, in this case it was Jeremiah, I'm going to call you a prophet even before you are conceived. Before you're even born into this world, you already had a function assigned to you. Now, I want to say this, God has done that to every single one of us. All right. And I want you just to take the word, take that scripture there. Okay. The word conceived comes from the word an idea or concept. In other words, um, I, I'm thinking of something. I have now come up with an idea. We call it we've conceived an idea. All right. You birthed an idea. Man does not work like that. By the time you are birthed, you are already established in God. I need you to understand, you were formed by Almighty God for a specific purpose and for a specific time. Your skill set was given so that you can survive the era that you're in. Your giftings will let you survive this. Why? Because God made you. He knows what you need. He knows the way that you need to think. How many times have we heard this statement, and I'm sure it's gone for generation upon generation, and this statement from the older generation, this generation thinks differently to our generation. Where did that thinking come from? If you have raised your child from a, a mindset or a thing of saying, listen, this is how you, it works. See, if everybody got raised with a similar mindset, how on earth did this generation get it so different? Because God has equipped them for this generation. This generation is not yours and mine. This generation are going to think differently. They are way into technology and they are looking at things totally different from the way you and I. But the point is, by the time your parents conceived you, you are already established with a function. Now God says, okay, come, be born into this world. Now once you are born into this world, God says, I need to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Why must you be filled with the Holy Spirit? Because I need to help you fulfill what I've planned for you. You can't do this by yourself. Because there are some spiritual giftings, supernatural impartation, supernatural things that you are not going to flow into. But you have to be led by the Holy Spirit. Because 
The devil and his crowd are operating spiritually for us. Just everybody on the natural we find. But now he's coming with spiritual tactics that you can't see. So God says, listen. And he planned this from the beginning. I'm going to live inside of you. I'm going to fill you with my spirit. Who is going to guide you, direct you and show you what to do next. So I want you to see this. John chapter 20 verse 22. It says this, and, when, and this is Jesus praying over the disciples. He says, when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. All right, that's where they got born again. All right, every one of us have prayed a prayer. I trust that every single person has done this. You have prayed a prayer and you have said, God, please come into my life. I'm sorry for my sin. I'm sorry for what I've done. I repent of it. Please come and live inside of me. I make you my Lord and Savior. That is where you got born again. Now, this is where they got born again as disciples. Remember, they could not get born again unless Jesus had died. And so in John chapter 20, these disciples all get saved. And he says that the Holy Spirit will now live inside of you. Okay, like I said, it was planned from the beginning. The Holy Spirit will be there to help us do what we need to do. Now, Acts chapter 2, verse 4, we read something. It says, And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The same crowd, the disciples were now in the upper room. Now, it's not the same experience that happened in John chapter 20. John chapter 20 happened before the upper room. It was when Jesus Christ had been raised from the dead before he went up to heaven. Okay, so it was in that period. And when Jesus Christ was walking the earth after his resurrection, he then met to the disciples and led them to the Lord, as we would call it. Okay, he breathed the Holy Spirit into them and they were born again. Now in Acts chapter 2, the same crowd is waiting in the upper room. The Holy Spirit now comes and falls in. This is now a different experience. Now we need the filling of the Holy Spirit. Because the filling of the Holy Spirit allows me to now function with some spiritual gifts that I cannot do in the natural. Now remember this, God formed me with some gifts already. My personality has been formed. There's some giftings that I already have. Let me give you an example. One of the giftings that I do have is to teach. Right? So even as a, as a young age, very young, I remember lining my brothers and sisters up and we would play games and I'd teach them. Some of these giftings are in from birth. And so I want you to understand that you have some natural giftings, but you need some spiritual impartation, some spiritual giftings. And when you get to the place of being filled with the Holy Spirit, you are now getting those spiritual impartation, that spiritual connection, that power that flows. Now, why do I need to have this spiritual impartation? Why do I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Why must I be uh, speaking in tongues? So that you can now operate in power. Alright? If you want to know more about it, go and look at the topic. You can get it on uh, either YouTube or on our app. And go and look for anything that I teach on the filling of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Alright? We've taught extensively on this. But the point is, I need to be supernaturally empowered because there is a function that God created me for. God made me unique. He then decided to fill me up with supernatural ability. And then he has called me to go and do a job for him that is unique. Now I want us to look at the function and I'm going to sum this all up nicely for us in a few minutes. 
Okay. In 1 John chapter 2 verse 20 he says this. But you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. In other words, the Holy Spirit inside of me is going to reveal things to me and I'm actually going to know things that I didn't know logically or hadn't heard through my senses. I'm just going to know like I know. Have you ever been in a situation where you walk into a place and you just know something's wrong? Okay, it's that type of idea, except that it can go much further. You're actually going to know events or you're going to know the feeling about something. And let me give you an example. There was a, a, a pastor um, friend of mine and he was an ex-police uh, policeman. And so he had a weapon in the house. And as he was walking out the door to go to church, his wife said to him, listen, I've got a strong feeling that you must go and take your weapon. He says, I'm not taking a weapon to church. She said, please listen to me. Take your weapon. And so he takes his weapon. And as he gets to the car outside of his driveway, as he gets outside of his driveway, the neighbors were in a situation where they were, there was attempted carjacking, hijacking. And because he had a weapon with him, he was able to intervene immediately. But if he did not have a weapon, it looked as if they were going to then turn on him too. And they were armed. But because he was trained, he had a weapon, he pulled the car out between them, and he pulled his weapon out, and immediately they ran away when they saw a weapon. The point is this. God had warned his wife and had given her an unction of what to do. It wasn't in the norm. And so the same happens with us all the time when we are spiritually empowered. God will give us unctions to be able to do what God has called us to do. Acts chapter 2, 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to the men, uh, said to the men of Judah who dwell in Jerusalem, let it be known that you've heard my words. Why is that important? Because Peter stands up and speaks. And 5,000 people hear him in their own language. Whatever language they were in, they heard him in their own language. That was totally supernatural. They get saved. So I want you to see that these supernatural giftings help me fulfill my function. Now you can ask me, Arthur, what are your supernatural giftings? Well, I have the one supernatural gifting I have is I have an, a supernatural ability to understand the Word of God. I have a revelational gift that flows. The number one comment that anybody has ever given me is the fact that I have never heard somebody teach like you. But it's not something that I studied. It is a supernatural thing that took place in my life when I was 16 years old. I have a supernatural gifting to flow in the Spirit and demonstrate the power of God. Alright? I have a supernatural gifting to know what somebody's function and purpose is because that's how I raise students. I know what God's called them to do. That is not something that is psychic or weird. It is God equipping me for my function. That's what I'm called to do. Romans chapter 12, verse 46, it says this. For as we have many members in one body, but all members do not have the same function. We don't have the same function. So we being many are in one body of Christ and individual members of one another. You are a unique member of the body of Christ, but together we form the body. Having then gifts differing according to the grace. What is grace? The God-given ability to do what God called me to do. Now listen to this. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them. 
So this evening, I want you to understand you are just as important and special and unique as what I am. I am not some big shot. The only difference between me and you, maybe, is the fact that I have recognized the function that God's called me to do and I'm doing what God called me to do. Are you doing what God called you to do? Do you understand the calling on your life? Do you understand the gifting? Do you understand how you tick? Because God is raising you up for a reason. And that is so that the body of Christ can function properly. So, you are formed. You need to be filled. And then you need to function. I'm trusting that every single, every single believer of Father's heart functions. I don't want to hear... I don't know what I'm doing or where I must go or something. Ask God just to show you what your gifting is. If you're not sure, ask somebody around you. What is it that makes me different? Ask that question. What is it that I do that is different from other people? And use that and start there and start doing that uniqueness. Practice it. It might be that you can do artwork. You can ask how's that going to glorify God? Creativity glorifies God extensively. And then you take your artwork and you lay hands on it and say, God, when I give this to somebody or sell it, God, I thank you that it's going to bring peace into that home. Why is it that the devil can curse stuff and get you to bring it into your home? Why can't we bless stuff and send it into your houses? So saints, I want to encourage us. Let us do what God has called us to do. Because he's got a plan and a purpose for each one of us. Let's pray. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus for each and every one. Lord, I thank you that we will function in the, fun in the calling that you have created us for. Thank you, Lord, that you have formed us, that you are filling us, and Lord, that we are going to do what you called us to do. Lord, I pray that we are going to fulfill everything that you have told us to do. We're going to be obedient to you. And Lord, that we are going to move in a supernatural power of God in the thing that you've designed us for. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I release your blessing over each and every one. And Lord, I thank you that we will see the fruit of everything that you have done in our lives. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Folks, I love you lots. Father's heart, I want to tell you that I pray for you. We are believing God for great things this year. And I'm trusting God that each and every one of us will function in the fullness that he created us for. God bless you. Have an awesome evening. I'll be back with communion tomorrow morning. Amen and amen.